welcome to our channel. This is April and Cindy. We're the Travel Collective, and today we're taking you on a journey to Savannah with Kara, and we'll chat about repeating locations. Uh, it's February, so you never know. You need some tips on a great city to go, and sometimes we go back to favorite places for different reasons. So come on, let's go meet Cindy, and let's get inspired. Hi, welcome back guys. We're going to talk about repeating locations today. And you know, this is something that people I hear people say all the time, like, Oh, I've already been there. I don't need to go back or really, you're going to go back to that place. You've already, you know, you've already done that. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's not your fault that you're going back. No, uh, but there's nothing wrong with repeating locations. And, um, you know, we want to talk just a little bit about how you can freshen it up and how you can make it better. So I know, uh, April, you go back to the same location all the time. Lots of the same locations. Yeah, lots of the same places. And I think there's a lot of reasons or even if I do go somewhere for the first time, like the first time I went to Paris, I instinctively knew and fingers crossed I'll get back. But yeah, you see things and you almost you can almost sense that there's like just so much. I mean, Paris is a place where it can easily be repeated. There's so many experiences you can have a different season. And often I'll, as a, since I have an eye with my camera and stuff, I'll see that I'll be like, wow, I wonder what this looks like in spring or what would it look like in winter? And right. what would this neighborhood look like if it were filled with people in the summer versus right now in winter when it's quiet or, yeah. and it's just, maybe you're a different, we change over time too. How would I experience this place, say with um, my husband versus a group of friends or right. all women? I think there's those experiences too. Right. I think that it's, um, I, when I shifted to the, the mentality that I could go, could go back and maybe should go back, um, it also changes how harried you are, hurried you are um, yes. doing things there because some people go with like, this is the only time I'll ever get here. So therefore I have to do it all. And I try not to think of it that way. I try to think that I could easily come back here. This is not it's 2022 air travel is pretty accessible. It's not um, hard for us to get around the world. So I should be able to go back to these locations. It should not be a once in a lifetime always. I mean, obviously I may not repeat lots of locations because Life, right. is, life is only so long. I know, right? <laughs> but um, I don't worry about that. I have to see every little thing. It's I can see just the things that are important to me today. And then, you know, think about maybe coming back the next time I come, I'll do something else. Um, and I, I think that mentality too, mm -hmm. is a, kind of a little bit freeing. And I think yes. that's important for people to not know we have no control over life granted, right. but try to think of it at that no i don't have to do every darn thing and this is the only chance i'm going to see it i mean that's just yeah it's an impossible bar you're setting up for yourself and you're probably going to add a lot of stress to yes. trying yeah. to like get in here and get out i mean come on you know the lube is huge getting up to the top of the i, I mean there's just too many things too and many things that, yeah you're not going to do it all. and and if you do that you're you're rushed right you're hurrying and you're trying to check boxes and i think it's more fun to be like more relaxed and taking soaking it up right like that's why right. i think that's the, the way to the way to travel um and you know there are places i mean you take your tours um to the same locations you go back to re repeated places um and it, you know when you go back to the when you're there the first time you're thinking about coming back like you walk by and like i don't have time this time to check that out but next time i'm going to do that you start making your list for the next time right exactly um, and then if you have to repeat a place for family members or for work or because sometimes you go back to the same location frequently because of that you'll find yourself you know just making list of things to do i mean i've been to new orleans several times i've been to new york city several times been into north carolina um, I would continue to go back to all of those locations. And lots of times when I'm there, that's exactly what I'm doing. Walking down the street, driving down the road, going, Ooh, next time I want to go there. I don't have time, yes. but I'm going to go there next time. Right. Um, and it does free feeling and, um, you get to have a different experience the next time. So, 
I think that one of the things we want also to talk about is how to like freshen it up. Like if you have to go back and repeating business uh, for business or for some for family, what can you do to change this time's trip? And there's lots of ways to do that. Oh, right? There's lots of things. Yeah. You can stay in a different place. I mean, mm -hmm. and sometimes if it's for family, that may not always be possible, but maybe you can add on an extra night, maybe staying with family at times can get, you know, there's those dynamics. So why not add an extra night on and just, you know, I've done that when I've gone to Colorado, sometimes um, I'll just say, hey, I'm going to add an extra night and stay downtown or stay in a more urban area so I can have a different experience and walk around or right. you know, go to the national park and spend a night, you know, on my own to see different things. So maybe choosing a different, you know, like New Orleans, like you said, there's lots of different neighborhoods. Yes. Yeah. Having a different, um, a different focus or a different, you know, home base, if you will, right, will help uh, change that up a little bit uh, when you go to a different, um, and go back to the same city. I mean, I've stayed in New York City. I can't, now I don't know how many times I've traveled there. I, I used to know, but it's been too many. And, um, you know, there's still neighborhoods I've not spent any time in. There's still places that I've only walked by and I'm like, oh, next time I'd like to like, you know, get my lodging in this area versus over here or whatever. And some of it's just about the food. You know, I want to, I want to eat the food that's in this neighborhood. So yeah. make sure I travel there. Um, you might even pick um, some touristy things to do. Again, when I'm on the trip, if I know that this is going to be a repeat place, I start asking people, um, God, where was I was in Houston this year and that little wine bar. And I know I talked about it before in another, like, um, serendipitous who just kind of walked in there. But when I sat there, this gentleman who sat next to me was asking me about had I had, I don't know what kind of food he was talking about, but he was asking me about where I was going to eat dinner. And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, he starts rattling them off. I couldn't write him down fast enough. I was just oh like, whoa, God. whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> What's the name of this place? What's the name of this place? And I knew I didn't have time. I was leaving like the next afternoon and he's like, oh, you won't have time. And I said, no, no, just give them to me because I might come back and I want to know what I was in Houston, like, where should I go? And he's like, oh, the best tacos are here. And so making a list of all of those things. So some of the things you can do is to start asking locals, especially if you go back to the same area. Um, right, exactly. Or yeah. change what time of year you go. I mean, yeah. maybe, you, maybe you had to come for a conference or maybe you're visiting family or friends, you know, pick a different time of year because any place right. will be different. There'll be different events. Like yes. if you go to a city in winter there's different holiday events maybe versus spring um mm -hmm. yeah and, those and types of things checking with the locals as to what's going on like if your family lives there they'll know some things but maybe ask your family's friends what's going because you already <laughs> exactly. know what your family does it's like hey tell me what else to do because i only know what you know these people know um and just and sometimes you can get them to explore i know in travels that i've done when i visited even visiting my mom in iowa i you know she grew up there, but there would be times of like, have you heard of this place? Somebody was telling, and she's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, let's go there. So we just would get in the car or my aunt Barb, who always knows of the day trips to take. I just have to ask her where, to, where, where would you like to go? And then my mom and I would go, you know, follow her around for another thing. So, you know, checking in with other folks who live in that community will help too. And if you repeat it, you have those opportunities, right? Right. Exactly. Or right. maybe you pick a theme, you know, maybe you do yeah. something fun. I know we We've talked to families that do like family vacations and maybe they are taking that same road trip to the, see the same family, same time in the summer, but make a theme out of it. Try to find things that are all related to like an author or, right. you know, maybe it's all history and it kind of gives you a whole different mindset of like picking a theme for music and how you might want to pack and what right. kinds of places to go eat. It just infuses some fun and something different into it, I think, and try new things. I mean, a lot of times it's easy to fall in, especially when you're visiting family or you're right. going to a conference, you like, you kind of have that routine, but right. pick something new, like, Hey, let's just go bowling or something, or, you know, <laughs> let's go, you know, make a, make a scavenger hunt in the live. I mean, there's some beautiful libraries. They yes. offer free tours you know, dig in a little and find out what free offerings might be available. We and get we so used to like going to these places. Sometimes we forget to use our 
travel skills and approach it like, hey, you know, there yeah. might be a food tour in that city. I don't know. <laughs> right. Because it's your own neighborhood. I know it's like the tour of your hometown. It's like, think about like, what would you do if you came here for the very yeah. first time? And even though you were going back to your, you know, location where you grew up or your family is already there. Um, and But I think the most, the biggest thing we wanted to talk about is like, it's okay to repeat. Like, yes, we talk about that. Like, it's really okay to go back to the same place. Think about that you can go back and that it's um, really uh, an important part of travel. I, Around the World in 80 Trains, the book I read a couple of months ago. Oh, wow. She, um, in the book, and when he shares the name, and I cannot think of the last name, but she was uh, on a train trip in North Korea, which you're like, hmm, interesting. Never thought about yeah. that. But one of the things that stuck with me was she, on that train journey, it was the same set of people that she was with for like about eight days. And one of the gentlemen had been on this train journey with her 10, he'd been on that same train journey 10 times. Oh, it wow. was her first time, but she was fascinated with why he wanted to do this over and over. So she sat down and talked to him about it. And one of the things that he said was he was interested and curious about how the place was evolving. And I think that's just something to think about as we go back to different places. You know, I went back to Paris 20 years later. Um, you know, when you go back to these places years, decades after yeah. you were there, they're not the same place. You know, some of it is similar, but the people have changed and things have, you know, evolved. And that's part of the discovery of travel too. It's okay to, matter of fact, that's actually an interesting thing. Like, hmm, be interesting just to pick a place and just keep going back. New York has been that way for me. I've been going there for decades and the city has definitely evolved. There's parts of the city that are not the same as they were, you know, 10 years ago that I, you know, like now or don't like now because of how it's changed. Oh yeah, right? exactly. And, and, and so, you know, kind of getting to know the place at a more intimate level happens when you do that. Yeah. Oh, I completely agree. I mean, some people say that about New England, like, why do you keep going back and visit some of the same places? And I'm like, because it does change, you know, yeah. the same little mom and pop place might not be there. Or there's so many little like side roads, I didn't get a chance to go down this gravel road. And I want right. to go check that out. And you know, there's little nooks and crannies that haven't been investigated. And I know that seasonally, I can't predict, you know, right. what year the, you know, this year, the red leaves may be more intense or next year, right. the leaves may have already fallen off, or we get a dusting of snow in the morning. I mean, it's just nature changes places too. So there's no predicting. And yeah. Yeah. So that's the fun, right? Of finding yeah, it is. <laughs> Well, that's it. We're going to go talk to Kara, who goes to Savannah every year. And I think that's part of the reason we kind of got spurred on this topic. So let's go check with her and see what she does to repeat the location. Yeah, let's over. We're talking with Tanya, who has been mistaken for Gina Davis and rarely eats ice cream, but never eats liver. She wishes she was from Ireland, but today she's going to share her love of Savannah. So welcome, Tanya. Hi. Hi. Hey, thanks, Tanya. Welcome and thanks for joining us. We're going to start our famous timer. Mm -hmm. So tell us what makes Savannah special for you and, you know, what, what drew you the first time? Uh, well, what makes Savannah special and what drew me to it to the first time is actually what brings me back there once a year. Um, it's an, a reader author get together called Literary Love Savannah. And it's a like a three and a half, four day event that uh, most of us start getting in there ahead of the event in order to go out and do extra things in Savannah before the actual event, you know, happens. Um, but the, the location is, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's downtown Savannah on the waterfront um, at the Marriott, same, same hotel every year, uh, same location. And that means that you get to try different food every year because as anyone knows savannah has a ton of restaurants there's plenty of places to go and if you only make one trip you kind of only get to see or do certain you know certain things so having it there annually it, i just keep racking up i put like a new restaurant on there but the the other thing is like i have two places that i absolutely have to go no matter what um, I'm going to Huey's in the morning and getting beignets at breakfast. 
and I am going to B and D Burgers and getting a burger um, one one evening for dinner. So that's two things that I will absolutely have to do. And then from there, I I kind of try like something new each yeah. year. So we'll have to grab those places because it's yes. funny that, as you say, you <laughs> you rack up these new places, but you go back to those. So those must be super special to take up time and, and one of your meal options, right? Yes. Yeah. Boy. And and I went, so like author um, Lexi Ostro is from um, New Orleans and I was talking about Huey's and the beignets and she's just like, these are probably not real beignets, you know? <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was like, well, come to come. breakfast. So, yeah. you know, a, a bunch of us uh, authors and, and our readers, we went down um, to breakfast and she was like, all right, these are okay. These are good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll let you have these ones. <laughs> Great. Uh, so tell us something that surprises people about Savannah, something that nobody knows. If you've gone back so many times, there must be something that, you know, when you tell somebody they're like, really in Savannah? Oh my goodness. So um, down, like downtown Savannah, the streets are still, um, you know, that kind of cobblestone um, right. walking there. And so a lot of people think because it's a tourist destination that it's, um, you know, going to be easy to, to navigate. And uh -huh. I tell people every year, uh, make sure you bring comfortable shoes, but make sure you bring like shoes you can walk in cobblestones on. Because if you go into the downtown the area there um, and you're in heels or anything, like I've seen so many people just get, you know, caught up in that. And the train, the, the trolley still, you know, goes through uh, down there. So there are tracks and I think, I think a lot of, um, a lot of tourist destinations have been kind of, you know, covered and paved. Yeah. Paved and, um, you know, you're climbing up the stairs and they, they're, you know, they're full stairs and, and, but they're not there. They're not, they're really not. So make sure you are prepared for that. Make sure you have an umbrella because it's going to rain. Um, <laughs> and you're not going to know that until it's happening to you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my um, gosh. And, and understand like, depending on when you visit it. So we, this, it's always during the summer, right? Because lots of authors are also teachers. And so they're off during the summer. So we have the event during the summer and that's hot and mm -hmm. humid. So inside every place you need a, a jacket or a hoodie or something and then outside you need to be able to take all of that off because <laughs> you will catch fire otherwise uh, it's so hot and humid uh, that's, some, oh, well, that's those are some great tips for travelers um what are some of the local spots that you would suggest a first timer go like um, so the, the cemeteries definitely, um, check those out, get in on like the hearse tour, the ghost tours, like Savannah's, you know, cool. known for all that kind of, um, you know, like that haunted, that mystery, that history. And, um, you know, there's some great parks and, uh, local shops and downtown places. I think I ate it like two cracked eggs last time and the bacon there, if you like bacon, like is amazing. Mm. That sounds amazing. We always ask about the food. You were talking about some restaurants and I'm just going to ask, like, is there some, besides the Benets, is there some special food that you would recommend to try when you're in Savannah? Um, well, okay. So like at B&B Burgers, they do these, um, they do like an alligator kind of thing. I don't okay. eat that. I just get the regular burger. Um, and then there's the Pirate House, uh, which has its own kind of historic, you know, um, context within you know within savannah there and it's a it's one of those sightseeing uh places that you have to go and then inside on the menu it gives you a great you know history and then also the restaurant has its own um ghost so it's <laughs> its own ghost okay good to know <laughs> yeah that's good to know exactly um so is there any, um, what would you tell someone who wants to go? That's one of our uh, other questions. You were talking about some of the first timers. If there's somebody who wants to go, is there, you go in the summer, is there a better time to go or an event that happens, you know, if they're planning their trip to Savannah? Um, I think that, well, cause Savannah is close enough to like Tybee Island and Hilton Head and, and all those sorts of things that you, 
there isn't, I guess, a, necessarily a bad time to go, except maybe hurricane season. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, know, you might want to avoid it then. Um, but other than that, I, I mean, it's the South. So even winter isn't always really winterish, um, that, that far down. Um, so just go like any time is a good time, um, to get out there and, and explore, you know, there's so much, there's so many local spots that, and then some of them may be touristy and, and occasionally kitschy, but that's kind of why you go on vacation, right? So right, yeah, exactly. That's right. I was I was gonna ask. Uh, that's our oh time, our timer went off. Yeah, but... I wanted to ask her where to next too. Yeah, <laughs> as an author, you know your imagination. Do you have a place on your bucket list, Tanya, that you're going to next? Oh, that I'm going to next. Um, no, I, I, and I should probably should. <laughs> My imagination takes me lots of places, lots and lots of locations. Um, but I myself travel pretty much for work and for, and okay. for writing. So it's like wherever the, wherever the events take me and wherever, wherever I get sent for work. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Well, Savannah sounds like it's been a, you know, pleasure for you to go to, right? Um, yeah. And how many years have you been going to Savannah, just so we can? Um, probably eight. Uh, wow. wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, it's an annual event. Like it goes, it goes there every year. If you love, I mean, if you enjoy books um, and meeting authors and really getting that one-on-one -on -one kind of connection stuff, then that's, that's definitely where where that. that happens is down there it's a yeah. small event not a major major yeah one, that's but what it sounds totally it sounds it. like a fabulous event for people who love you know book authors and then being right there with all the history and the ghosts Thanks for joining us today. April and I enjoyed talking to Cara today about her repeating uh, visits to Savannah. And we hope we gave you guys some tips on how to spice up your repeat visits, uh, whether it's a family vacation or something you do for work. Um, there's lots of ways to uh, spice up your trip, even after you've been there five, 10 times, lots of ways to enjoy that. Um, and if you enjoyed listening today, please like and subscribe to this channel, as well as our video here. Uh, put your comments, we'd love to hear from you. And you can hop over on our podcast there's a link below in the description. Uh, today on our podcast, we're talking about the top 10 places to repeat visit. Uh, so good to hear from you and travel with us through real stories from real people. Thank you.